What's up, scholars? Today we're going to talk about solving exponentials without using logarithms. How in the world will we do that? Well, if we can get our equation to have the same base, then the exponents must be equal to each other, and we can set those equal to each other and solve. Uh, why? Well, because it, it has to be, right? If we have a base to some exponent that equals that same base, then that exponent has to be equal. Now, will they be exactly the same thing? Now, this might be like 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the x plus 4. So, 3 would equal x plus 4. Something like that. All right. Uh, let's start off with just getting the bases to be the same, because that's really the trick here, getting the bases to be the same. So let's rewrite this 6 to the 2a plus 1 equals 36 as something that has the same base on both sides. So we're looking at u6 and 36. What could we possibly use as a common base? Well, 6, we could use 6 as a common base. This already has a base of 6, and we know 36 is 6 squared. So this is 6 to the 2a plus 1 equals 6 squared. Now, we're not going to do it in this example, because all I ask you to do is rewrite the equation so it has a common base. Uh, but eventually, like the next step would be to set the exponents equal to each other and solve for the variable. Cool. However, let's go back <clears throat> and do two more examples where we rewrite the equation so that it has a common base. Here's our next one, a little bit trickier. We've got 243 to the negative x minus 1 equals 27 to the x. Now, not quite as simple as the last one, because uh, in the last one we had a base that was really obvious right away. Um, what are we going to use for 243 and 27? Three, you're correct. <clears throat> we can write 27 as 3 cubed, 3 cubed to the x, right? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, and 243, how many 3's is that? 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, that's to the third, that's to the fourth, that's to the fifth. So 3 to the fifth is 243, so this is 3 to the 5th to the negative x minus 1. Fabulous. And just for good measure, what would we do with these exponents? We have an exponent to an exponent. You're correct, we're going to multiply. So this would become 3 to the negative 5x minus 5 equals 3 to the 3x. And again, we're not going to do it in this problem, but if we were trying to solve, we would set these exponents then equal to each other, since we have the bases equal to each other. Cool. All right, one more of these where we rewrite the equation so that it has a common base. All right, here's our last example. 1 fourth to the negative n minus 1 equals 16. Hmm, this is challenging because now we have a fraction. We have a fraction to a negative exponent. Huh. Hmm, well... We read write this and take a negative 1 out. We've got negative 1 to the n plus 1 equals 16. And when we have a negative exponent, we know we could move that, uh, like this whole thing, into the denominator. So this could become 1 over 1 fourth to the positive n plus 1 equals 16, right? This was a negative exponent, so we said, okay, well, we'll just do 1 over 1 fourth 
1 over 1 fourth, 1 divided by 1 fourth. How many times does 1 fourth go into 1? 4. So this is really 4 to the positive n plus 1 equals 16. Now all is becoming clear. We can write 16 as 4 squared. So we've got 4 to the n plus 1 equals 4 squared, and now our bases are the same. And again, the next steps would be setting the exponents equal to each other and solving. All right, cool. Sounds like we are ready to actually do that. Let's do another example where we rewrite the equation as common base and solve for the missing bit. All right, we'll start off nice and simple. We've got 2 to the 3x equals 4 to the x plus 1. We need a common base. It's obviously going to be 2. So we rewrite this 4 as 2 squared to the x plus 1 equals 2 to the 3x. We will multiply these numbers together. 2 times x plus 1 going to be 2 to the 2x plus 2 equals 2 to the 3x. Bases are the same, so now we can set the exponents equal to each other. We've got 3x equals 2x plus 2. Subtract 2x on both sides. Et voila, x equals 2. Uh, how would we check this answer? Well, we could take this guy and plug it all the way up to the top. So, check it out. 2 to the 3 times 2 should equal 4 to the 2 plus 1. 2 to the 3 times 2 is 6. 2 to the 6 does that equal 4 to the 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 to the 6 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And 4 cubed is 4, 16, 64. Cool. Check, check, check. You could also plug this into the Wolfman and check your answer. Let's do another one, shall we? All right, check out this beauty. We got 1 over 25 to the negative x times 125 to the 3x plus 3 equals 1 over 5. First things first, we got to find a common base. So, what do we see here? Five, dudes. We use a 5. So 1 over 5 is 5 to the negative 1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 1 over 25 to the negative x is 1 over 1 over 25 to the positive x, which is just 25 to the x. 25 to the positive x. Uh, well, that's not in terms of 5 yet. But 25 could be written as 5 squared. 5 squared to the x. And 125 is 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So this is... 5 to the 3rd to the 3x plus 3 equals, let me bring this guy down, 5 to the negative 1. Okay, we multiply these together. So we get 5 to the 2x times 5 to the 3 times 3x is 9x plus 3 times 3 is 9 equals 5 to the negative 1. Now what do we do with these exponents? Here we have an exponent to an exponent, a power to a power we multiplied. Here we've got two bases that are the same. So we add these exponents, 2x plus 9x 
plus 9 is going to be 5 to the 11x plus 9 equals 5 to the negative 1. We did the hard part. We got our equation to be basis of an exponent equals that same basis of an exponent. Now we just set these exponents equal to each other. Now we get 11x plus 9 equals negative 1. Ah, uh, subtract 9 on both sides. We'll get 11x equals negative 10 divided by 11. Running off the page, x equals negative 10 over 11. Wow. Let's go check this out on the internet, shall we? I think we shall. All right, so I went to uh, my favorite jam, the Wolfman, Wolfram Alpha. Plugged in our original equation. I put like a million parentheses. So I put parentheses around all of my fractions. I put parentheses around all the things that we're multiplying. I probably didn't need to do it quite so hard with the parentheses there, but it just makes me feel comfortable and safe. All right. So we double check that our input actually looks like what we wanted it to. 1 over 25 of the negative x times 125 of 3x plus 3 equals 1. Yeah, good. We're good. Cool. Um, that's what the uh, Japical representation of 5 to the 11x plus 9, right? That ended up being our left side of the equation, and that's our 1 over 5. We're seeing where those two intersect. Dun, da, da, da. Real solution, x equals negative 10 over 11. That's right. If we wanted a decimal, we could find this approximate form. Ugh, I don't like that as much. Give me that exact action. And then, you can click on the step-by-step -step solution. Oh, uh, you gotta pay for it. Got it. Maybe go in with a buddy. I think it's like 30 bucks a year. I definitely use this a lot in college. Would highly recommend to my peers and my students. <clears throat> anyway, that's the good stuff. Right there. That is the good stuff right there. All right, scholars, that's it. That is the last new material you're going to learn for this entire year. You made it, you bunch of geniuses. Look forward to uh, next week where we do some final dish action. You'll have a couple questions each day where you'll either get to make a video of you explaining how to do those questions, or you can come, uh, we'll do a, a meeting, you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, where you explain how to do those questions. Or, worst case scenario, you type out using an equation editor how to solve those questions. I'm going to tell you you should vote for number one or number two, because equation editors are like... <sighs> not the most fun you'll ever have. This will be way more fun. This will be way more fun. Anyway, come hang out with me in office hours. I love you guys. I will see you soon. Peace.